Well, good evening. This is uh, Brandon Jackson, uh, school counselor at Kokomo High School. I've been a counselor for over seven years, uh, and I love what I do. Um, I think the goal for every educator and every counselor is to ensure that their student uh, is succeeding, is is excelling, is uh, uh, excelling uh, socially and emotionally and reaching their academic goals. But also, one of my goals as a school counselor is to expose our students to um, uh, leaders, expose our students to, to individuals who uh, they can look up to and who uh, they're going to be one day. And so I, I've done a series of, of interviews for Black History Month to spotlight uh, amazing people who are doing great things uh, in our community and our, in, in our world. Uh, and what I do, I, I, I send these interviews out um, to my students and other students and my colleagues um, in hopes to encourage them to continue to achieve and, and reach their dreams. Uh, today, we have a, a, a gentleman by the name of J.C. Barnett. Um, he is a native of Kokomo High School. Well, excuse me. He's a native of Kokomo, Indiana, graduated from Kokomo High School in 2004. Uh, he is a, a, a educator, a, a community advocate, a father, a coach, uh, a business owner, but also someone who most recently has been creating portraits of, of some um, amazing uh, leaders uh, and, 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 Afri and, and African-American uh, figures uh, that have imp and impacted our world. And one of the things I wanted to do today was have a discussion with Mr. Barnett and talk about just his evolution to uh, what he's been doing today and also how can he how how. Just some words of wisdom on how he can uh, encourage our students. So we're going to connect with uh, uh, Brother Barnett uh, and have a great interview. So thank you for, for joining us. Hey, how Hello. you doing, JC? How are you? I'm doing wonderful, brother. Like the hat, man. Thank you so much. Yes, I'm, yes. I'm I'm thrilled to be here, and I love a nice hat, man. So yes. I try to keep going on. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So I want to uh, thank you. Like I said in my introduction, JC, I've always um, uh, my goal as a counselor is to encourage our students um, and to uh, and to expose them to individuals who are making a difference in our world. Um, and and this month is Black History Month, uh, yeah. and I was actually um, I caught. Um, your article that was in a paper in uh, uh, Kokomo, Indiana. And I uh -huh. said, man, we got to get that brother on uh, <laughs> to talk about some things. So thank you for joining us, man. Yes, sir. Thrilled to be having this conversation with you and hopefully um, say something that inspires another. Yes, yes. Yeah. So, so JC, can you talk about um, um, your upbringing in Kokomo and just, and just what molded you to become the individual that you are today? Uh, my upbringing in Kokomo um, uh, has been wonderful. Um, I've had two loving parents that have always been in support of me and anything that I've been for uh, in my interests. And uh, and really, we, we are a family of strong faith mm -hmm. uh, that, you know, in the Lord. And we recognize, fully recognize that we are highly favored and we are blessed to be a blessing. So anything that I try to do each and every single day is to try to be that blessing to someone else, uh, to bring joy into their lives or, or to just uh, fulfill a need that they have and serve them in that way, be a, be a servant. That's, that's really uh, my calling on life. Yeah, and I think I think it's interesting what you talked about. You talked about your family and faith being being instrumental uh, in who molded you into who you are today. I think I think a lot of young people um, um, they they miss out on 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 connecting with those positive individuals in their life. That will make a difference. Um, can you talk about uh, real quick, JC? You know what what were some things your parents instilled in you um, as a young person? Um, when, when you were kind of navigating life at, as a student at Kokomo High School? Uh, so <clears throat> my mother, once again, it goes back to you are blessed to be a blessing. Uh, what they instilled in me um, as, a, as a young kid coming up was right. that uh, you put others before yourself. 
And when you put others before yourself, God honors that type of individual and you are blessed and highly favored. And the things that are going to come to you because you put others first uh, are just going to be instrumental in, in helping you take that next step um, into be, having a successful whatever you want it to be. Uh, relationships, uh, careers, uh, friendships, whatever uh, um, whatever it is that you set your mind to, you're going to be uh, blessed in that because you put others first. Mm. That's what you really instilled in me. Yeah, and that's interesting because, um, you know, um, the first shall be last and the last shall be first. Absolutely. I'm kind of sharing with my children about um, um, you know, uh, the story of Jesus and before he uh, died on the cross, what did he do? He what? Washed the feet of his disciples. He was yes. a servant. Um, yeah. And, and I, I made that picture to say, hey, if you're going to be the one who shines, then you're going to serve. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that's so important. And we, we, we talk to our students about making a difference in the community, giving back, uh, giving right. their time, uh, because that's important. Um, Absolutely. So I, I definitely thank you for sharing that, JC. Um, yeah. JC, was was there a, a, um, a moment in, in your youth or childhood that changed the trajectory of your life? Like for me, um, I, I talk about a moment where um, I had a, a young a, well, friend of mine who was cling, clinging to life in 05. Mm. And that changed the trajectory of my life to do some different things. Um, yeah. Do, do, do you have a moment like that you can kind of talk about? Yes, I do. As a matter of fact, um, it, it came uh, later in life, I'd say, not necessarily as a young kid, or I would say I was probably 25 or 26 years old when I read a book by a man named Andy Andrews called The Noticer. Mm. And in this book, was a man they called Simply Jones, not Mr. Jones, not anything else, simply the name Jones, who came into the lives of multiple people uh, simultaneously and impacted them in a tremendous way. Now, when you read this book, you can kind of sense and get a feel for who exactly this person, yeah. uh, who they modeled this person after. Mm -hmm. And I, I strongly believe that it was Jesus Christ Mm. But, uh, so Mr. Jones came into the life of these individuals simultaneously. He was there for them when he needed them the most. Mm. Uh, he gave them uh, structure in their lives. He gave them, and the book is really all about perspective. Yeah. Okay, so after when I finished this book, that word perspective has stuck with me ever since I finished that book. The pers from the perspective of is that this life ain't about me. Mm. It's about others. Mm. It's about impacting others in such a way that they are moved to be inspired and to create and to do for others, yeah. and live a life of servitude um, the way that we were intended to be. So uh, ever since I finished that book, the trajectory of my life has changed because that is the life that that is the direction that I wanted my life to, to be led in. And so in every sense of uh, the word servantship, yeah. Yeah. I try to make that my purpose every single day. Mm, mm, mm. That's amazing, brother. Uh, <laughs> you, you know, it's interesting. I, uh, I, I do a devotional every morning. Uh, and this morning uh, was, was, I think it was yesterday. Um, uh, yeah, but I walked through the valley of shadow. Mm -hmm. Even it was talking about perspective. Talking yeah. about you're going to go through things in life. You're going to endure hardships, but it's it's kind of like um, how how am I perceiving it? Because it said though I walk through. So whatever you're going. You're in, you're going to go through it. Right. But yeah. you know, it's all about having a perspective when uh, you're in it. So I definitely agree with you, man. Uh, and I think a lot of young people, uh, especially who are in high school, um, 
you, you know, they need to adjust that perspective. Okay. Right. Um, right. Number one, meaning high school is what? Four years. Mm -hmm. And you out. Right. So don't think that it's going to last forever. And that's why, that's why I constantly tell my students, hey, let's set some goals. Let's work towards have some action items where you can be successful. So I right. definitely um, agree with that. And I think, I think another one book that I never really enjoyed reading as an adult, but I remember around 25, I, I, I read the uh, autobiography of Malcolm Mack. Mm. Uh, and that was just a, a, a book that really impacted me because it was just about how he evolved to the individual who he was. And it was about perspective. So, right. um, Yes, sir. What, when did you discover your calling in terms of um, uh, being an artist? Because uh, I know you, you went to Anderson University to play ball. Yes, sir. Was that, I went, was, was that a goal of yours always? Uh, so <clears throat> my first year of college, I went to Anderson University, uh, played a year of football there, decided that I loved the school. The, the school was amazing. Uh, I wish I could have finished my four years there, uh, but I did not want to play for the football team anymore. Mm -hmm. And Anderson University, as you know, tuition is high. <laughs> if I could, if I could uh, save my parents that trouble, I probably wasn't thinking that way back at that time. But uh, later on in life, I saved my my parents a lot of uh, uh, money coming back home and finishing my degree here at IU Kokomo. Yeah. Came back home 2005, ended up with my business, a bachelor's degree in business um, in 2010 from IU Kokomo. Mm -hmm. um, I very much wanted to be an athlete right. and fulfill my dreams of playing next level college football. Mm -hmm. uh, and even when I came back home, I didn't know where exactly my life was leading. And it wasn't until maybe my second year at IU Kokomo that I connected with a, a, a lady by the name of Kathy Barnes. And I would say she was, Man, that's my you know Kathy? Mom. Yeah. I, I, I know Freddie and, and Aaron. I'm a oh, Kathy my Barnes. goodness. Yeah. Amazing, amazing woman and family. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. Kathy yeah. Barnes. So I could go to her. Of course, I had an academic advisor. I had advisors that I could go to and talk to. But she was the woman that... I, w I could go to her office yeah. and speak with her and lay it all out there and know that she was going to give it to me real. Mm -hmm. And so whenever I would step into her office, I was I had my mind set on that. All I, all I knew that I wanted to do was make money. Mm -hmm. And she smiled at me with the smile that you probably have seen before. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, she, and she said, J.C., you're going to make money. Everybody can make money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But what do you love to do? Mm. And it was at, at, at that point in time that it really put into perspective for me that I needed to start thinking in that manner. And regardless, the money was going to be there. But I had to figure out what I love to do. Yeah. And so going back, uh, I had a wonderful, a tremendous example uh, growing up in my father, mm -hmm. who was a youth football coach. Okay. It turned out that he coached me at every single level that I played at, all the way from flag football all the way up through the end of my high school career. He was there. Mm. And even basketball season as well. So football, basketball season, he was there. And he had such a heart for youth that what he had was already built there was there in me. I just had to figure it out on my own. So in 2005, I'm 20 years old. I just had come back to Kokomo. And once Kathy Bard said that to me, I realized maybe I should start doing some coaching. So PAL football was my very first coaching opportunity uh, to where I started making a connection with the youth in this community in a different way than I had ever made before. I was not a youth anymore. I was a, a youth leader. I was a, a mentor, an example, a coach. And so from that point on, I never stopped coaching. Coaching led to uh, training. Mm -hmm. Coaching led to relationships. Mm -hmm. 
And so my career path still wasn't figured out yet. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm, now I'm going to fast forward to where I am now. I'm a financial aid counselor at IU Kokomo. Okay. I'm the VA certifying official there, and, and now I'm newly the co-director of the Black Student Center on campus. Oh, wonderful. And what I've been able to do is merge those two things. Mm -hmm. So what I do in financial aid and what I'm now able to do as the, as the co-director of the Black Student Center yeah. is take all of those tools that I developed over the years as a coach, Take all of those tools that I've been able to develop as a mentor in this community and put them into my career. Yeah. And so now within a career, I have purpose as much purpose as I had outside of as a coach and yeah. as a trainer. So it's really where it should, where it starts really it's my story isn't any different than it would be for anybody else. Mm. Your passion in life really starts with serving others. Mm. I served the youth. I served in that coaching capacity. I served in a, a trainer's capacity. I'm serving in my career path. Mm. And, uh, and so I can see now that those two things go hand in hand. Yeah. If you are about somebody else, and investing in somebody else's life, that is where your calling is. Mm. And no matter what you do, no matter what your career is, uh, or what you end up, what your love is, if you can put those two things together, yeah. you're in a good place in life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And where the art, I'm sorry. Oh, great, great. Where the artwork comes in at, and what I've been doing here lately, and I don't know if this is a question that you are gonna lead to or ask, uh, so I love my people. I love my, I love black people. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And it's, it's, it is not, it's not necessarily all about black history month, but black history month, I'd have to say did give me a little bit of a spark, but this is not something that's going to end right. once February ends. That's good. That's good. I, I want to highlight those individuals like I painted portraits of George Washington Carver, Ida B. Wells, Fannie Lou Hamer, et cetera, et cetera. These people did tremendous things in this society for civil rights yeah. and, and their people and, and taught their people. George Washington Carver was an amazing botanist, mm -hmm. but there was something inside of him that made him want to, to use his gift to impact his people. Mm -hmm. And so beyond what his profession was, beyond what his gift was or what he could produce for other people, I said, hey, I have the ability to paint this man's portrait. And it, it's not all about the artwork, but because I can do the artwork, I can speak to people in this way and highlight who the man was behind the profession or the or being a botanist uh, or what he could do as far as serving other people. Yeah. He had a heart for people. And that's where it starts. Mm. He was a servant. He had a servant heart first. Yeah. And then he could produce for other people. Yeah. And so that's what I very much feel that, you know, I'm trying to do is highlight that in those people. Mm. Mm. Man, that's amazing, brother. I, I know, I know it's interesting. You kind of talked about your journey. Um, I have a similar journey. Well, I think um, I attended an HBCU when I graduated from high school, uh, okay. Morris Brown in Atlanta. I don't know if you've seen the movie Drumline, you know, but. Yeah. Yes. So it was down there, um, had a passion for music. Um, I had an internship at uh, LaFace Records, which was um, L.A. Reed and Babyface. And, and, and just, man, just, just got to experience some great things. Came mm -hmm. back home, went to Vincennes University, and then I finished at Indiana State for my bachelor's and master's degree. But I, just, I discovered along the way I had a passion for um, helping young people uh, to make that connection to the from school in the real world, and that's why I became a school counselor. Uh, wow. and, and it's so it's crazy because one of the things I wanted to do when I came to Kokomo High School was highlight people from the community, mm -hmm. even though I'm from Indianapolis. Um, but I wanted to uh, talk about you know I've I've, I've had um, um, Dr. Bond, um, uh, you know Aaron, uh, I, I've had. Um, 
um, a a Arian Morrison, who's a student at Harvard. Um, yeah. I, I want to talk to you because I want our, the young people at Kokomo and outside the community to know, hey, I can succeed. Yes. And just like the, the, the um, people you're spotlighting, I think that's so important because I think our young people need to understand who came before them. Right. Okay. Yeah. I, I I don't know if you're familiar with the um the, the live museum that they do with Pokemon High School, where they kind of spotlight different characters in history. Um, I've seen that before. Yeah. 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 So I did one on, on Babyface, just for the simple fact he's from Indianapolis. But I talk about how when he he graduated from high school, he was trying to find his way, but never giving up on his passion for music. Yeah. And and. And so I want our students to understand, you know what? You can't make an impact on this world. Mm -hmm. Find your passion, just like you talked about. Right. Um, what what kind of got, got you into to, to being artistic and creating, um, being all this stuff? Also, I, I see you a, a, a bootleg a barber. <laughs> <laughs> a barber? I haven't cut somebody's hair in many, many years, but that's funny you say that because I messed up a lot of my friends' heads. <laughs> uh, and so, but yeah, I haven't, I haven't really touched clippers for a long time, yeah, except yeah. for my own face. Right, right, right. right. Uh, um, um, but I'm trying to touch on what you asked. What, what specifically was it that you so, asked? Me? So, what, what made you get into to, to, to discovering you had a passion for um, to being an artist and and, and the creation of artist. pictures of of uh, of individuals in history. Right. So I've been a, I can say that I've been an artist for a long time, and not just with a pencil or a paintbrush. Uh, I've dabbled in music myself. My friends, I have, I have extraordinary musician friends yeah. that should be highlighted themselves, yeah. honestly. So many of them in this city. But yeah. have Hilton, Turner. Hilton Turner? Hilton Turner and Anton? Uh, I, I know some Hilton, Turner. I think Hilton came out in 1998. <coughs> from, uh, okay. Yeah, he's a little bit older than me, so yeah, I wouldn't yeah. be too familiar with him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but anyway, so so my grandmother, when I was a young kid, she used to doodle on the back of envelopes. Okay. She wasn't serious about it, um, but she could just doodle very well. And I used to look at those pictures and I said, man, I want to do that. I want to be able to do that. Yeah. And so I started picking up a pencil myself and, um, and started doodling and, and drawing. And over time, just got better and better at it. And I would say probably about 10 or 11 years ago, I picked up a paintbrush mm -hmm. and I've been in love with it ever since, man. That's, it's just something about it. It's like, I describe it and it probably doesn't even make sense to anybody, but I describe it as fishing. I could go with my fishing line and cast it out there over and over and over again and catch a single thing, but I could do it all day long. Yeah. That's what artwork is like for me. I could do it all day long. I'm producing something while I'm doing it, always. Mm -hmm. But I could just get lost in it. Yeah. So um, that's what it is, is, is for me. It's therapeutic. It allows me to escape. And over time, my skills have just developed in, in such a way that I can present it. And it's been amazing that people, to, it's been amazing to me that people show appreciation for it because, uh, you know, as an artist, that's, that's what you hope for, but you don't really know that that's what will happen. <laughs> yeah, 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 definitely. Uh, I think John, one of my good friends, said he's an artist too. Um, you know, it's crazy because my, my, my brother in law is an artist as well. Um, he uh, actually uh, sent my wife some of his pictures. So I, wow. I, I'm not creative. I mean, I, 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 I've been creating bracelets, um, custom made bracelets. So I've and seen those. Those are awesome. Yeah, yeah. Right on. I have to get one from you. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. But it's my way of of uh, self self care, and giving something mm -hmm. that I created to people um, is just just a, a passion of mine. So, right. um, so JC, be, before I let you go, man, I, I want you to real quick to um, I know you're an 04 
or for a grad of, of Kokomo High School. Yeah. Um, what what advice would you give some of our students about um, overcoming obstacles and, and following their dreams? Uh, I'm red and through blue and uh, uh, red and blue through and through, man. <laughs> I'm gonna be a wildcat for life. Uh, I appreciate opportunities to speak into the lives of the young people in that school. As a matter of fact, I was just in, um, in contact with a former teacher of mine about coming up and seeing um, a student and their artwork. Yeah. And just to give them encouragement to continue on that path, to keep honing in on those skills and, uh, and producing in the way that they would love to, to produce. Right. Um, so advice that I would have is to lock into what you love mm. and don't make it all about you. Yeah. Mm. If you can take that passion and bring joy to somebody else's life, mm. it's going to take you tremendous. It's going to take you to places that you never imagined. Mm -hmm. It's going, and, and I'm not even talking about physical places. It could take you to physical places as well. It could take you overseas. It could take you from state to state. Yeah, yeah. But I'm talking about it could take you to relationships mm -hmm. that you never thought that you could attain before. Right. It could take you to career paths that you never thought that you could attain before. Mm -hmm. But, you know, once again, it's about having a servant's heart. Use what the, the gifts that you have, that passion that you have, to invest in other people's lives mm. and wonderful things are gonna happen. That's that's really the main advice that I would give to anybody. Yeah, yeah. Man, that's amazing advice. I, I think our, our young people need that because mm -hmm. so much going on in the world, it's just, I mean, they need that inspiration, so I thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah. JC, I wanna thank you so, so much for your time, brother, tonight. Um, I think, uh, I know this is not the last time we're gonna connect, um, yeah. but I, I just wanna take a moment to um, to create something where, um, you, you know, we can put something together to encourage our students. Yes, um, I, 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 re I really appreciate what you're doing um, in the community of Kokomo and well, outside the community because I know people have noticed your work and, and I definitely commend you, brother. Thank you so much. I commend you as well. This is a beautiful platform for, for people to uh, be inspired mm -hmm. and for others to listen in and, and hear what exactly where they need to hear it and in that moment in their lives. Uh, I very much want to connect with you as well for our yeah. Black Student Center at IU Kokomo. Yeah, and I want to develop that relationship further as well so that we can start, you know, getting into the high school yeah. and letting them know that we have a space for you just right down the street. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to go out of town to seek what you're you're looking for. Um, so, yes, very much would love to continue. To, yeah, to really yeah. Definitely, definitely. Cool. <laughs> All right, brother, we'll connect. Yes, sir. All Absolutely. Right, yeah. Thank you. It's been an honor and a blessing. Thank you. All right, too. Take care. All right. I'll see you.